Hey, Way family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. So, about two weeks ago, God woke me up at exactly 2.10 in the morning. And when he woke me up, he gave me a message. And when I got the message, I just grabbed my phone, my notepad. I said, duh, 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 duh. started writing it down. So I wrote it down and he woke me up and I want to share what he told me. He said, hold on and press forward to the threshold. The threshold is where the door is. It's where I open the door. Get to the door. There's so much resistance to get to the front of the door because of where you will go. At the threshold is the miracle. At the threshold, many people try to open the door. Many think that they have walked through the door just to see that they never crossed the threshold. I will take you, it will take you to trust me as you walk to the door, that God will open it when you arrive. Doubt and unbelief keeps the door shut. Trust God for a move of God. Trusting in ourselves will only lead to disappointment. For only God can do the impossible. How does God open the door? He speaks it into existence. Believe, have faith in what God told you, and move towards it. When you get to the door, knock. Because that's what you do when you get to a door. You don't just sit there and look at it. You knock. And after he, he gave me this message, I wrote down this scripture that he gave me as Matthew 7.7. 7. If you have your Bibles today, you could turn to that scripture. And if you're taking notes, take notes. Because sometimes while you're hearing a sermon too, God will speak and download something specific to you that you might need to write down. Matthew verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 7, it says, keep on asking And you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. The title of my message today is Positioned for the Release. Positioned for Release the release. See, in this this message that God gave me at two in the morning, he was letting me know there's a release that's going to come upon your life. Now position yourself so you can receive that. There's a, there, now for you, there's a release that's going to come upon of your, upon your life. And we need to position ourselves to be able to receive that. Right? That word release means to allow something to move act or to flow freely. God wants to release miracles to us. We're in, some of us right here, we're in situations where you know you need a miracle. And the first thought when you need a miracle is, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how we're going to meet, meet these bills. I don't know how we're going we're gonna to come up with this. I don't know how we're going to make it through this season. And it gets you to a place where you realize, I need a miracle. Maybe it's a health issue that you have no control over. And you need, realize you need a miracle. God wants to bring a miracle upon your life. When he opens that door, it's answered prayers, inner healing and deliverance, and blessings over our lives. I want to go over three keys to bringing about God's release upon our lives. So these are three keys. Number one is it all begins with prayer. Everything, it all begins with prayer. Have you noticed how much warfare there is on your prayer life? The, when I say it all begins with prayer, that's the ask in Matthew 7, 7. I have a question for you, and my question is, what is it that you're asking God for? 
God wants you to ask him for things. God wants you to pray to him. What is it that you're asking God for? Now, my other question is this. Do you believe that's going to actually happen? Maybe you're asking God to break an addiction off of your life. Do you believe that he's going to actually break it off of your life, though? Maybe you're asking God for an increase in your finances. Well, do you believe that God is going to bring you an increase of your finances? You might be asking for a rest, restored relationship, maybe with a spouse or maybe with one of your kids. Do you believe that it's going to happen? I, why do I ask that? It's, if you believe it's because faith is a part of this formula to see the release upon your life. When I ask, God, give me the faith to believe that what I ask for, I'm actually receiving it. Mark eleven twenty four 24, it says, I tell you, you can pray for everything. And if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. We must get into a place of prayer, but also faith. And some people around you, you can't even tell them what you're believing for because they're going to think you're crazy. Like if you say, man, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm believing for my, my son, that crazy son. I'm believing for him to come to God. You got to watch what family members you might even say that to. Because the first thing that might come out of their mouth is negativity. The first thing is reminding you of all the mess ups they had. I don't need to hear all that when I'm trying to believe for a miracle. That's why there's seasons where I have to get away from certain people, not because I don't love them, not because I don't want to be around them. It's because I'm believing for something, and I don't want no hindrances on that miracle that's coming, right? And so don't feel bad if you have to stop talking to an uncle for a little while, if you have to stop hanging out with some people in the family sometimes. Don't feel bad about it because the reality is this. One day, that mir they're going to need a miracle too. They're going to need it, and then they're going to see it come to pass in your life. See, they're not going to believe if you just say it. And this is, a, this is crazy, and this has happened in my life. When you separate yourself, believe for a miracle, and it happens, they understand why you separated yourself from them. And not only that, they begin to, to have a thirst for God because they see you just like a Gatorade commercial. And they look, and they're like, man, I'm, I'm so thirsty. How do I get what they have? And you develop a curiosity of them. Prayer is not just communicating with God, though. God is, it, it's not just I'm praying and I'm talking to God. It's a relationship. It's I talk, then you talk. See, I could talk to somebody and not connect with them. Have you ever talked to someone and you feel like you're not connecting? Right? You could pray and talk to God but not connect. I don't want to just pray, pray a, to pray a prayer. I want to connect with God, the one that holds the miracles, the one that will open the doors and, and bring about a release in my life. That's what I want. Second Chronicles 7, 13 through 14 says, At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and, and, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their lands. Prayer and seeking after God, along with repentance, brings a release of blessing over your life. You know what's awesome is that when a blessing is over your life, whoever is attached to you will be blessed. And I'm not saying that just because it sounds nice. That's the reality. Whoever, and that's why sometimes the devil wants to get people away from you when you're blessed because he doesn't want them to receive that blessing either. And so when, but those that are around you, they'll be blessed, right? Um, John 16, 23 through 24, it says, at the time you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. So I'm blessed when I ask, not because of me. I don't ask in Gabriel's name. It's not going to move nothing. It's not going to cause anything to happen, right? If I say, man, God, I, I believe for this miracle. In the, in the name of Gabriel, be healed. They're going to look at me like, 
What? Get poisson? Like how? What? In the name of who? The, right? My name is shakable. The name of God, Jesus, he's unshakable. When I say in the name of Jesus, I receive. This door is going to be open in the name of Jesus. I receive a breakthrough from my child. I receive breakthrough from my family member. I receive breakthrough in my workplaces. When I, when I pray in the name of Jesus, that's where the power comes from. When I'm praying for people and they're getting delivered from demons, you know what they hate? They hate when I say, in the name of Jesus. They hate it. It drives them crazy. I've even seen where people, they cover their ears. The demon does not want to hear it. They're, they're, when we're praying for them, they might, they'll be manifesting and they cover their ears. And the demon will say, shut up. I say his name again. You see, it's through the name of Jesus that we're all here today. And it's in the name of Jesus that you will receive the breakthrough that you're asking for. 1 John 5, 14 through 15, it says, and we are confident that he hears us. Have you ever felt like God doesn't hear you? Like if I, I've been there, if you could just be honest with yourself, have you ever felt like, man, God's not hearing my prayers? Well, this is the thing about that. That's a lie. Because I'm reading you the Bible. I'm not even giving you my opinion. I'm reading you the scripture. It says, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything. In the Bible, it says that he hears us whenever we ask for anything. I believe that you, don't, you need to be very, it says confidence though in that. See, when you're confident that he hears us, it will help you have what? Faith. If I'm confident that God just heard my prayer, I got the attention of God. I know that he's going to answer me. It says, and since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. He will give you what you, sometimes we're, you, we're too stuck looking at ourselves that we hinder our own blessing from coming. Yes, you're going to do your part, but you, you have to allow God to be God. It's no one's job to save somebody. I can't save somebody. You can't save somebody. It's our job to speak of the gospel, to tell them about Jesus, to be loving to them. But Jesus is the one who does the saving. Jesus has enabled us to pray and receive what we ask for. I want to go to the second point. So point number one was what? Point number one was it all begins with what? Prayer, Prayer which is the ask. And we're going through Matthew 7, 7. We're breaking down Matthew 7, 7. So that's the ask. Number two is stay focused on God, which is the seek. Stay focused on God. Now that you made your request known through prayer and that you have received by faith your request, seek the Lord. That means fix your eyes now on God. Sometimes when we pray, the manifestation of that request doesn't come instantly. But do you know what happens? The prayer is answered instantly, but it, sometimes it takes some time to come down and manifest here on earth. Then there's some prayers that you'll pray and instantly you'll see it right before your eyes. While we're in the waiting, because maybe there's something that you're praying for, but you haven't seen it come down yet. While you're in the waiting, what do we do? We keep Seeking after God. Keep focused on God. Do you notice that when you're believing for something, things start to get pretty rough? It's to take your focus off of God. And I've been in a position before where I'm believing for something and then I realize I'm losing focus on God. If I'm losing focus on God, how can I believe that God is going to do what he told me he will do? The first step onto the pathway of seeing God's miracles released upon your life is to put God's kingdom first. That's the very first thing is I got to put God first. I got to prioritize God if I'm going to seek him. Let our ambition be to prioritize God. Seek the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything that you need. There's a promise in here and I want you guys to catch that. Uh, and... I was, man, I've been 
preparing for this message, right? God's been downloading more and more, and I was praying. I was saying, God, how is it that people show you, God, that they prioritize you? How is it that, that your kingdom comes first in their life? And he said this, I am not first in your life if you do not tithe. I said, God, are you sure you want me to talk, tell that to the church? Because people don't like talking about money in church. You know what I'm saying? Man, God, like you want to put me out there like that. It's not a money thing. It's a heart thing. And that's why I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable talking about it because God, I know it's from God. Tithe is 10% of my increase. That's the reality. It's not a man-made rule. Pastor Marco did not come up with this. A pastor did not create this. It's in the Bible. And if you're a Christian, you believe in the Bible, right? And we read the Bible, right? If I read the Bible, if I, if I believe in the Bible, that means I believe that it's true what it says about tithing. Because what messes us up, because remember, the devil wants to rob you of the release. And when, if he could get me to not focus on God. See, in my tithing, I focus on God. In my giving, I focus on God. I ask God, give me your heart, which will be what, what he'll do when you ask that. He'll give you a heart for people that you don't even know. You see, I never forget where I come from. I, I never forget that. It's, it's crazy. I feel like, man, it was just yesterday when I was strung out on drugs. It was seven years ago. February 22nd, 2012 is when I gave my life to Jesus. And I, I don't forget where I come from. I don't look the same, but don't let it fool you. I, I know where I came from. And I understand how God brought me to where I am today. And I understand that me putting him first in my heart through my tithes and through my giving, the little that I had while I was struggling, I understood this. It works. It really works. And I, and I, I came from a family of poverty. I came from where my dad's still right now. They're not serving the Lord, but they will, they will, they'll be coming soon. If they come today, they're about to get hit. If they come at 11 at 1 p.m. hungover, so we're about, we'll pay them. <laughs> Drink, my, my dad might just got done drinking some clamato or something, walk in here and he might, but hey, he's going to get touched by God. He's going to be touched by God, right? That's my boy right there. And so, so we, we, we have to keep in mind, it's get your eyes off of money, money, money. It's not about that. If you think like that, you're always going to be in lack with holes in your pocket. Now, I know some people that make a, a lot of money, but they have no peace. They don't see that money blessing people. One of the most beautiful things that I have ever got to do is give to people that cannot give to me. It's a real heart check. It's just, you'll really know you have the heart of God if you could give someone something and you can't get nothing in return. But God is so good that he always gives you something in return. God will always reward you. Always, always. Well, what did God set up? Because I said it's not from man. Man did not create tithes and offering. This is not from man. What did God set up? God set up a system so that every single day I can be blessed. Every single day I could be blessed. Tomorrow I'm already blessed, guys. I'm a faithful tither to the Lord. It's not just oh, to the church. It's to the Lord, which is his, given to his church. This is whose house? This is God's house. Notice it doesn't say Pastor Mark on the building, right? And if you know the heart of our pastor, you know that he has a heart for God and for people, right? And so it's, it's not a, Matthew 16, 10, it says, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be, you will, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities, God wants to give you greater finances with greater responsibilities, but if we are not faithful with what he's given us now, how could you get an increase? There's times where every, when I come to God, I want to come with the gifts to the Lord. If, if this is my house and you guys came to my house and we had a little party, potluck, everyone's bringing what? Something. I mean, we come with these requests to the Lord and... 
I want to come to the request. You know what's the other thing about give, when you give? It's also an act of faith. I'm giving one because the tithe is, is already due. That's already his. But when I'm giving, I'm giving thanking you for answering my prayer because I believe that that prayer that I asked for is done. I believe that it's coming to pass. Here's an offering, God. Use it with whatever you got to do with it. Bless somebody, feed somebody, house somebody. I, I want you to see that this stuff really works. Because you can't think, I'm seeking God. And my heart hurts for those that think, I'm seeking God. But you're not tithing. God is not first in my, your heart. My, my heart goes to, out to you. Because I want you to understand a very simple principle. I'm a simple, simple guy. I was not the top of my class or none of that. I got kicked out of regular high school, went to continuation school. I was not a good teenager. Thankfully, I got to help teenagers now. <laughs> but I'm very simple. I love it simple. And you know what I love is God is simple. When he brings stuff to us, it's very simple. Tithing is simple. And no matter what waves are hitting me and my family in my life, that doesn't mess with my tithe. I can't afford to stop tithing if I'm going through hell. I can't afford to do that. We need, we need breakthrough. I, I, got, I want you guys to understand. I came from a place where I was riding a bike throughout the city of San Bernardino to get to church. My sister's bike, I was riding it around, going to church in it, asking people for rides. I was not, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't born with no Rolls Royce or something. I'm from San Bernardino, like from San Bernardino. Like, you know what I'm saying? You take off the suit, like if I, I put, you know, I'll show you some pictures, but it's different. I got hair now and everything. Right? I used to walk around everywhere. Baseline, Little Africa, I mean, all the projects, like everywhere. Probably be like, what are you doing over there? I wasn't preaching the gospel, I'll tell you that much, you know? Now, how did I get over here? My cousin Eileen, wave Eileen, that's my cousin. Stand up, stand up, say what's up. That's my cousin. She's in our women's home right now. That's my cousin over there. That's my first cousin. We're, we're, our parents are siblings. She knows how I was. And my brother, my older brother. How... And I want you to understand that I got to that, I was at that place where I was riding a bike. I mean, riding a bike is fun when you're a kid and a teenager, but when you're an adult, it's embarrassing to me. <laughs> I didn't like it. If you say, Gabe, did you, did, were you a bike rider? Is that why you like riding bikes? No, it was not a sport for me. I had to get whatever I, I could get because I wanted to get to church. Or I had to get to work. I got to that, I went from there. I started tithing when I first came in. The first week I was there, I learned about it. They said, I want my money. Okay, cool. What do you want, God? How you want it? Okay, boom, boom. I started learning. Little by little, I wasn't taught these principles growing up. I learned it. I went from that place to getting a license. Hey. <laughs> I was 19 years old, no license. I had just got jumped by five people right here in San Bernardino. My eye was shut like this. Half my eye was shut. We had a good one, you know? <laughs> Just got, I probably wasn't even 24 hours um, clean. I come to this place, the Way World Outreach, where God brought me. One of these services, the friend that invited me to church was, is going to be here. Now, I came to this, to this church. I began tithing to God, Right? It's not two people, it's to God. I tithe to God, he uses it. You know what's funny? I tithe to God, he uses it to restore me. That's, that's crazy. Sometimes you think you're giving and, oh yeah, I'm going to help some people at the home or I'm going to give and hopefully it blesses this person. It's going to do all that and it's going to touch you too. It's going to transform your life too. I went from that place where I was riding a bike to where I've now had three vehicles and never paid for one of them. Not one of them? God, stop messing with me. Not one of them. God, I, I remember crying and I, and I said, God, why are you so good to me? What's, why? I don't deserve this. I was a bad person. I had a spirit of drugs on my life, a spirit of murder over my life. I, have a, I had spirits that, man, I was down and out. 
I don't deserve any of this, God. How did I get the woman of my dreams? I don't deserve this, God. I was a bad guy. God said, I want to show you something. I want to show you that I'm not going to give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you what I already have planned for you. I about a fall on that one. Man, and, and, and it was so, it's, it's been the best journey of my life these last seven years. The best. The best. I knew I always wanted something like this, but I didn't know how I was going to get here. I didn't know how, I didn't know it was in, in, I didn't even, when I was dating, I'm sorry, Brian, but when I was, I used to date, you know what I'm saying? But when I was dating, I was picky. You know what's so funny about that? I didn't want a girl that was out partying and doing all these things. I was like, mm-mm, she has to be a good girl that doesn't drink. I did that. Doesn't smoke or do drugs. I did that. Um, doesn't party, doesn't do any of those things. Doesn't cuss, doesn't smoke cigarettes. I was like, I realized, oh, so you want a Christian, you want a woman of God. I didn't know where, how, where she was, but she was at the Wayworld Outreach in Pastor Marco's house. I didn't know that. God would do that. My first car that I received, I'm not going to stay too long on this, but I was at a bank. I'm so excited about the way, Sierra Way campus when we were over there. I'm so excited. I'm inviting people everywhere I go. So I'm at the bank. I'm like, yeah, hey, man, have you been to the way we're just down the street? Why haven't you gone? They're like, huh? It's down the street. Come, boom. I end up getting five people there, bankers, tellers, and I'm tell- sharing my testimony with them. They all come to the church. A few of them stay a couple that I invited, they're here to this day still. And I remember they had a car and they're selling. I said, I'll buy it. They said, okay. I said, how much are you selling for? 7000 I said, let's do it. I don't know how. <laughs> I didn't even have like, like, I wasn't even like hired by a regular company. I was like agency. Like agency, what's up? <laughs> and next thing you know, they said, but we'll sell it to you for... 3000 and you can make payments. I said, oh, man. I said, Look, oh, man, let's go. A couple days later, they called me. We spoke. She said, I spoke to my husband. God told me we can't, we cannot sell you this car. God told us we have to give you this car. And it was a nice car. It's a, a sports car. Two-door, sunroof. Was it Rock Fosgate or whatever, the sound system? Man, I was in there at night crying, playing worship music. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I'm like, God, this stuff works. You work. God is always waiting and, and willing to move on your behalf if you would activate him through tithing. He's just waiting for some people to activate it. Praying and tithing. It has released favor over my life. Not just, I don't just pray. I pray and I tithe. Now you might think, why does God need my money? He's God. He doesn't need your money, one. It's a, it's, it's a heart check. Am I really first? Let me see. Give me what is already mine that I gave you. And you don't even have to give me all of it. Just 10%. I didn't know I was going to be talking about tithing this long, but we're getting it. And the other thing is, with money, in the hands of believers, it's going to further the gospel. And you know what's crazy about that? We want people in our families to be touched by the Lord. Well, let's further the gospel so it could get to them. Let's further, the, let's further the kingdom so when they come and they need restoration, they could go to our men's home, our women's home, our children and families' home. Pretty soon we're going to have a home for teens that are leaving the foster system and they need to transition out once they age out. I love my church. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's just a blessing. You guys are looking at a real life testimony. I mean, it's crazy. It blows my mind every day. You know what's cool about that scripture in Matthew 6.33 is that God pledges himself to respond to you for prioritizing him. He pledges himself. He said, he will give you everything that you need. Everything that you need. Psalms 37, 4, it says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. I want to 
because of time, I want to go to our third point because I want to make sure we get through the whole thing. So number one was, it all begins with what? With what? Prayer, which is the ask, right? Number two, stay focused on God, which is the seek. He says, ask, seek, and what? Knock. Number th- my third point is always expect a move of God, which is the knock. Always expect a move of God. Knocking in the scripture, knocking has to do with endurance, faith, and patience. Many times we're giving up too easily. We ask, we're seeking, but we're giving up too easily. We're going to the door. Some of us go to the door. We just go up to it and we just look at it and we just open sesame. What's up? What's up? This isn't no like Walmart where you just walk in and they open on its own. Where's the automatic open? And you just, and because there's no open, you just walk away. God, save that person I've been praying for. God, heal me of this, this disease. God, I want you to help me get a, a, the home of my dreams. God, use me to touch people and heal them and love them and preach the word. And we're praying for these things. We're coming to the door and we just walk away. Now, some of us don't. Some of us will even knock. We'll go boom, boom, boom. Post up for a little minute. Check our watch. And we out. See, I told you it didn't work, Pastor Marco. He said, we didn't believe and have faith. I tried. It doesn't, see, if you came to my house and did that, when I open the door, you won't even be there. You, if you knock and leave, when God opens the blessing and the release is here, you're out of position. My job and my responsibility is to be in position for when this door opens. When this door opens, I'll be there. I'll be there. Right? It's not just, it's knocking with an expectation. Because I know what happens when that door opens, a move of God happens. I need a move of God. My family needs a move of God. They're crazy. They wouldn't deny that either. either. They'd be, yeah, he's right. Amy Hill's right. Yeah. They need a move of God. I'm standing in the gap for them. Sometimes you're knocking on the door and it's not for you. It's for somebody else. Don't give up on the person that you're knocking on the door for. Keep knocking. Because it says when you keep knocking, the door will be what? It's going to be open to you. Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation... By prayer and petition and thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. Knocking is keeping on believing. Knocking is an act of faith. I'm only going to knock because I know someone's going to open this door. If I told you to come to my house and then you arrive and you knock, you're going to expect that, okay, Gabe's going to let me in. Right? Right? When God gives you a word and tells you to come into position, expect that he gave you that word to be in this position to come and knock. So God will release it. Just keep knocking. Knocking has a noise to it. Sometimes it's a cry to God. Sometimes it's a shout of joy. Knocking has a sound of worship attached to it. This is the... The, the definition of the word knock, not a biblical definition, I just Googled it. It means strike a surface noisily to attract attention, especially when waiting to be let in through a door. When we're knocking, when you're still believing for that person to get saved, when you're still believing for God to, to change things in your life, to help you with this circumstance, when you're praying and worshiping and crying before God, You're getting the attention of God. That knock gets his attention. It's not just a request, but he wants to to go deeper with me. So I knock and I worship. 
When I was um, studying on Friday, I was praying, and God, this is one thing that God shared with me. He said, I will not hold back the heavens from you and those around you. You have my attention. So beautiful. It's, think about that. I will not hold back the heavens from you. Which means everything that, that heaven has, the peace, the joy, the power, the healing, the love, the transformation, the prosperity, everything that you're asking for. I will not hold back the heavens from you and those around you. You have my attention. Let's get God's attention. It's time that we not only ask, and ask God of things, but it's time that we make some noise and get knocking. Right? Right? That's why when I worship and when I'm, when you, you might even see people worshiping, you, and they might be crying or they might be jumping, you don't know what it is that they're believing for. You don't know what it is that they're thanking God for in advance for happening in their life. You don't know what it is that, that they're knocking for, but they're knocking for something. Psalms 100 says, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us. And we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Let's ask God to help us overcome disbelief so we can see a move of God. The, remember earlier I said what keeps the door shut, shut is unbelief. Mark 9, 20 through 25 says they brought the boy to him. When the demonic spirit saw him, immediately it threw the boy into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he answered, since childhood. The demon has often thrown him into both, in, both into fire and to water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us, the man tells Jesus. This is what Jesus says. Verse 23, Jesus said to him, you say to me, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts in me. Immediately the father of the boy cried out with a desperate piercing heart saying, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering around them, he rebuked the unclean spirit and saying to it, you deaf and mute spirit, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. Some of us here today, we're hurting or we're in some chains, we're in some bondage, and God is saying, would you just come to me? Come to me and I will set you free. Get in fellowship with me. Ask me, pray to me, I want to hear from you and I want you to hear from me. Seek after me. May I be number one in your heart. May I be first in your life. When, you're for, when I'm first in your life, I'll bless your generations. I'll bless your kids. They'll, they'll see how to put God first in, in someone's life. The blessings going to flow onto your kids, onto your grandkids. And if you would just knock, don't give up so easily, no matter what it looks like. Don't quit. When we do these things, what happens is God says you're in position for a release. Amen. Let's give God a hand if you guys learned something today. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.